Hey everybody, it's Amy from humilityanddoxology.com and I am so excited to get to share one of my favorite Shakespeare passages with you this week. It's timely um, because we are close to the day referenced in this poem. This is definitely one, another one that's going to be hard for me to be still in because I typically stand up and proclaim it, you know, all the kids, we get out our swords and we cheer really loudly, so I'll try to restrain myself. But you've probably been around enough to realize by now it's hard for me to rein it in with the drama of the poetry, but again, that is part of what makes it so much fun to do with my kids, to uh, get into it and cheer loudly and wave our imaginary swords around. Okay, so this is an excerpt from Henry V, one of Shakespeare's histories, and this is near the end as um, the British troops are surrounded, or the English troops, I should say, are, are surrounded, they're cornered, and they are grossly outnumbered by the French soldiers, and there seems to be no way out. In fact, it seems that they will probably all perish in the ensuing battle. And yet, King Henry is unwilling to relinquish honor. And he calls his troops together and gives them this rousing speech. And that is what we're going to recite today. So you can print it out from the year of memory work at Humility and Doxology and read and recite along with me and enjoy this week. The St. Crispin's Day speech from Henry V by William Shakespeare. What's he that wishes so, my cousin Westmoreland? No, my fair cousin. If we are marked to die, we are enough to do our country loss. And if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honor. God's will, I pray thee, wish not one man more. By Jove, I am not covetous for gold, nor care I who doth feed upon my cost. It yearns me not if men my garments wear, such outward things dwell not in my desires. But if it be a sin to covet honor, I am the most offending soul alive. No faith, my cuz, wish not a man from England. God's peace, I would not lose so great an honor as one man more, methinks, would share from me for the best hope I have. Oh, do not wish one more. Rather, proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my host, that he which hath no stomach to this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made and crowns for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand a tiptoe when the day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispian. He that shall Live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say tomorrow is St. Crispian. Then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, These wounds I had on Crispin's day. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot, but he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day. Then shall our names, familiar in his mouth as household words, Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester, be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world. But we in it shall be remembered. We few. We happy few, we band of brothers. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves accursed they were not here. And hold their manhoods cheap 
whiles any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day. I'll see you next week.